Are you ready? Yeah. I don't have my hearing aid either. That's okay. We'll just, uh, I'm going to yeah. just tilt down the camera a little bit. This is going to be part two of the Desmond years. Last time we looked at Desmond, the early years. And this time we're going to look at Desmond, the later years. Right. Well, the 1950s, I think, is what we said, right? Right. You want to push your glasses just back? Oh, perfect. Now, um, last time we talked, uh, we were just about talking about the end of the war and then you're coming to America. So let's kind of overlap just a little bit. Yeah. Um, you finished up with a degree in chemistry, is that right? In physics. Physics. And then, but you didn't want to do physics. No. I, st I started taking, I, I found my camera. It's an Icomet, icon or I and, found it the other day. And pictures became imaging. Correct. Became your real love. Yeah. And you were a writer earlier in your life, and then you started taking pictures and enjoyed that. And then you decided you'd combine the both and move. Or how did you get into? Tell me how you came from Britain, how you came to North America. Right. And I took a boat. I remember the uh, the cost. First, um, uh, I came to Canada first, not to um, the America. Not to the States. No, I came to Canada. Canada was looking for um, people who would um, and come to what is was essentially an empty land. Right. So and lots of land. Yeah, lots of land, and they would. Uh, what they would do is, um, they they give you a a, um, a cash disbursement. It was about a hundred. It was about one hundred twenty-five pounds, which paid for the boat fare. So that was uh, a steerage class, a, a tourist class. So it's pretty. One cool. up before the bottom. It wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. So we were <clears throat> we were three we were in three in a cab in a in a in a in a cabin in a cabin three, or three or in a or cabin. Yeah. And uh, you, I was on the top bunk. Someone's in the middle and someone's on the bottom bunk. So I, it's just a lick of the drawer. And uh, off, we go, off we went. How was the top bunk? Uh, it's scary on the top bunk because uh, you have a fear of falling down. Although there's a ladder, as you, as you know, on, on these. Uh, to, so you just step onto your ladder and, and work your way down. Any chance of rolling out of the bed? Uh, no, because they have a, 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 bo a wooden slat. A railing kind of uh, thing. Yeah, a little railing. And how did you get, to, when you say it's the luck of the draw, you were just the last guy in, so you got stuck on the top? That's right, that's right. Yeah, and did you know the other two people? No, I got to know them pretty well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you remember their names? Not a word, no. not a word. I can remember my name. Though. <laughs> so they, uh, they're there in Britain. Or you're in Britain, and you get on the boat with these folks, and they were also coming to Canada. Where did the boat land? Where did the boat stop? The it, the, uh, the boat landed in Newfoundland, um, uh, Halifax, any of those? Uh, uh, Halifax. In Halifax. Halifax. Right? So the boat comes to Halifax. Yeah. You get off. Then where'd you go from Halifax? Halifax, I went to um, I went to um, uh, the small what's well, a very small city before Montreal. I don't know Quebec very well. But anyway, from that from that small city, and I went from Halifax essentially to Montreal. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and you got off the train in Montreal, and you're kind of walking around. That's right. It was I was yeah, I found a I found a hotel, reasonably priced. Yeah. And uh, and then I, I started to walk around Montreal, and I saw this big tower. Yeah. And you told me the story last one. So in part one, we talked about how you got hired on to the station in Montreal. And then, now tell me how you got from Montreal. So you're working in Montreal in the TV station. What were you doing for the TV station? Well, the first thing was to get a job in the TV station. Yeah. And the, uh, thing, the thing about it was uh, they, were, they were not ready to go on. The, it was, let's say it was April that I got there. Uh, but they weren't going on the air till, um, till October. Right. So I had to figure out what I'm going to do for those months. And so what did you do? Well, I had a camera. Uh, I had a bit of money in my pocket. And I made friends with several late, very nice ladies. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, they knew they were, they were Montrealers. They said they would sh show me around. So that's what they did. I got to see a good bit of Montreal, the mountain, yeah. and uh, all the many beautiful streets around. Years later, I did, a, as you know, a book, a travel book, a guide to Montreal. Mm. But, um, uh, but after a while, I thought, uh, but the, the thing about Montreal, they were going on the air, 
in the fall, but they said Toronto's going to be on before us. So I then took the train to Montreal, uh, and in Montreal, I, uh, I'd never seen such a beautiful city mm -hmm. with the mountain, mm -hmm. and um, it just was very, a very artistic city. I, I just love Montreal, and, uh, I went, and I, I was there for quite a while. In Montreal. Yeah. And then um, what, uh, your books, just sort of stepping back to that for a second, how did your books sell, by the way? It, it sold pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of ironic that the, the, the immigrant was able to eventually write the book on it, right? Yeah, but uh, by then I wasn't, when I wrote the book, it was 20, 20, 30 years later. No, but that shows your, uh, your learning, you know, how you learned and All right, you got of course. better at that stuff. And your book in Russia, when did, uh, the Moscow book, how yeah. did that sell? That sold very well, very well. Both of because them. there hadn't been any guide, any modern guide to, um, to Moscow. So I looked at um, several of the early guides as, uh, uh, and, uh, from the turn of the century. And I still have those, those early guides. I kind of collected them after, after a while. Well, that's good then. Yeah. All right, so then you're in Montreal, and uh, now how did you decide to go to New York City? You got tired of Montreal? I mean... I thought I'd get, well, I th yeah, I thought the Big Apple is, uh, was the place I should go to, to climb a bit higher. So you got to sort of where you were going to go. TV was relatively new in Montreal as well. Right, it was correct. brand new. Correct. And so then you decided to go to New York because TV had been there for many years. At this Correct, point. yeah. So where did you go when you got to New York? You landed in? Well, I, I landed, uh, well, first I landed in Manhattan. I realized pretty quickly if I kept staying in Manhattan in hotels, I'd be out of money and no job. Yeah. So I, I um, uh, oh, so I got a job in a gas station. That was outside of town, right? That was outside of town uh, in uh, Stamford, Connecticut. Which is a very wealthy, wealthy area. So then you moved, and you moved out to Stanford as well. Yeah, I did. And then you were telling me you worked there. How long did you work at the gas station for? I worked there for about, seems to me, about a year, about a year. So you're okay, and then you met a guy at, through the gas station, didn't you? Yeah, uh, Fred. Yeah, uh, no, Fred. Fred Bloy was the owner of the gas station. Okay. And there I was, you know, with all my dreams of becoming a journalist working in a gas station. Of course, Gary, one of the things I, I recommend to any young student who wants to to a career in, in journalism, start a diary. Because uh, your memory is one thing, but diaries are forever and uh, pretty accurate. I read your diary on working for Fred there when you were pretty flat broke and yeah. paycheck to paycheck. Uh, what did you do at the gas station? Pump gas. Did you do any car repairs? No, 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 no. They would tr trust me. I, I was no mechanic. No. But I, I pump gas, and um, and Fred will come and count the ch the money at the end of the at the end of the day or night, depending what shift you're on. If you smell gasoline walking when you're going by a gas station, does it remind you of your time with Fred's gas station? Uh, it does. Yeah. Did you come home smelling of gasoline every night? Oh, you did. Your hands were uh, particularly smelly of gas. And what else? What did you? I do? wouldn't come home though. They, they would uh, wash my hands there. Uh, Okay, so I'm a customer. I pull in with my big 1952 Oldsmobile. <laughs> what do you do to the car? First, you uh, you say hi to the guy, and then you then you uh, start to clean the windows, right? And yeah. then you, uh, when you've done that, you um, have him uh, work the wipers, just to see everything's all right. And then after that, you're. Um, you collect the money, whatever it is, twenty dollars. They know. When do you put the gas in? You haven't put the gas in yet. Well, you put the gas in, and uh, at the uh, I can't remember where the gas tank is. Somewhere on the back, the maybe. Gas. Yeah, yeah. So do you put the gas in before or after you wipe the win windows? Uh, well, you know, you put the gas in first of all. Right. And then you move to the windows, clean right. the windows for him. All that, the side windows too. The side windows. Yeah. It's it's the wiping of the windows, the cleaning of the windows that gets you the tip. Really. Yeah. Were you good at the window wiping? I was pretty good. And then, um, do you ever check the oil? Of course, I'm sorry about that. I, 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 I did. You yeah, check the oil. Do you do that automatically, or do they? Oh, automatically. And you're just looking for oil level? That's correct. Did you put the oil in if it needed a quart? Yeah, you put the stick in, right? And then yeah. you pull it out, and then you can see it's, if it's short. Did you have a uniform? Uh, yes. You did. And what, was he affiliated with a particular oil company? 
Exxon uh, or Sunoco? I could say any one of those. I can't remember. Okay, so you don't remember. No, no. So that, um, but you did that. You were pretty good at it. Yeah, Kicks I, were okay. That was uh, yeah, it was okay. And but I, I thought, how long <coughs> I've been? Excuse me. For about six months. And I thought, how long is this going to continue? Now, the good thing about Sanford is the sailing is part of, uh, it's, on the, the, it's on the Great Lakes. Hmm. And every, uh, many people sailed, so I started sailing. So you had a boat, did you? I never had a boat. But what I did have was people who had boats. Gotcha. So did you sail with them? I did. Did you enjoy sailing? Uh, oh, I, lo I, love, I, I love sailing. I really do love it. Yeah, it's great. Great fun. So do you remember all the names of the different parts of the boat? Yeah, the, the, the keel, the, 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 uh, the rudder, the um, prow. Port is what, left or right? Port is left. And starboard? It's uh, right. And the back of the boat's called? The keel. What's, um, what's the jib? The jib is uh, what you set for the sails, hmm. setting your sails. And the jib arm? And the jib arm is? the same thing? No, the jib arm is, the jib is, down below that you wind the sails up with, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know all the pieces. Did yeah. you ever fall overboard? Never, thank God. Never. Only when you were rowing. You told us that in part one. Yeah, I did. That's you right. You fell into the cousin's soap residue. Oh, my. Yeah. So you would go sailing. So that was kind of nice. Then. I have a long, I've had a long, unhappy um, uh, friendship with water. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> and wars, you were telling me as well. So you've got, uh, so you were sailing on the weekend, so it wasn't a bad lifestyle. It was a great lifestyle, and I went on some wonderful boats with, with um, people who were obviously extremely wealthy and working in, uh, in New York. So in a way, I had a, a possibility that, uh, uh, with, particularly with customers who repeatedly, repeatedly come in, that one day I would meet a customer, would, and I did, uh, and find my way to New, to New York, to Manhattan. And so one fateful day, a guy pulled in. Did you get a tip on the windows? Yeah, I always got a tip, yeah. Yeah, and so then you started talking to him. You told him you were a journalist? Yeah. And he, uh, well, how did he get you a job? Uh, well, it, it was, he had a job at ABC News. Right. And they said, if you want to join us, uh, we'll find work for you. And so you, you took him up on the offer? I did. And was Fred nice to you when you left the gas station? <laughs> He was very nice, very nice. Did he give you a watch or a pat on the back or a little something? Thanks for your service? Uh, maybe a pat on the back. Or probably nothing. Fred was a growly kind of guy. Oh, was he? Yeah. When I wasn't pumping gas, I had to um, dig out the, behind the garage where you just needed it cleaned out a little bit so I could put another car in there. Oh, so you were doing construction at the same time. Well, uh, yeah, in a way, you could call it construction. It was good for me, though. I mean, I was working my shoulders, you know, when digging is great stuff. And when the car came in, it would run over the, little, the cord, and what sound would the cord make? A ping. Ping! Yeah. <laughs> and that was a call to, a, to duty, was it? That's right. Um, before I forget, I was going to ask you, because we talked about your family the last time, so you, did you have any contact with your family at this point? It, Writing letters home or phoning them ever? Oh, sure. I never phoning them. I mean, we, we didn't have a phone in Manchester. But, you know. Really? No, no phone? No, no phone. What was your family like, by the way? What was your father like? Gruff. Gruff. I would say he, he hid his kindness, and uh, he, um, he pressed on the gruffness. And I got, uh, um, if, I, if I did anything wrong, I got the strap, mm. which is the kind of strap that barbers uses to strap their uh, razors. Yeah. yeah. And your brother and sister, would they also get the strap? Uh, my, my brother... Possibly, my sister never. You were the oldest. Yes, and I there was. was. So you had a brother and a sister. So there was Correct. three of you. Yeah. So did you? Were you? Um, were they most strict with you then? Was your dad? Yeah, I would say so. Was your dad gruff with your sister as well? No, not particularly. And your mom? What was she like? Oh, uh, kindness. Kind. Wonderful. So she didn't hide her kindness. No, no, no. She was very, very kind. And then I had um, aunts and uncles, several of them, which was great. Because I'm going on a, a, for, out for Sunday dinner, being Sunday dinner in Britain, of course, being noon mm. on, the, on the dot. Mm. Uh, we're going out to their home on Sunday dinner. The, uh, the, this particular aunt and uncle had, um, had uh, an, they lived in a council house 
in Britain, you know, that yeah. is a tied house, belongs to the city. Yeah. And uh, on either side of the porch, they had polished uh, sh um, brass shell cases. No shell, of course. Wow. And, and in those, they grew gladioli and other flowers, depending on the season. Where'd they get the shell casings from? Um, I don't, I,